Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And for those of you sweltering in the heat, because it has been really, really hot. Oh I'm not God. complaining. I, you know, there are too many summers when it's not hot. And I don't, you know, like I There's get it. hot, but it's, it's been it's really hot. It's unusually humid. Well, and it's, it's kind of like and I also, soupy. And I also think we just don't have, there's been no respite. Like it's just hot at night and hot in the day and hot at night. And, and it never seems to go away. But just so you know, today is Tuesday and supposedly after Wednesday it's breaking. I and heard back to that the heat is breaking, breaking because my husband broke his toe, which means Part solo dog, dog duty and it's been a lot like i yeah. feel like it's 10 o'clock on a tuesday morning and i have had a full day yeah. like i have had i don't know a hundred fights on facebook <laughs> you know uh i got blocked by tall uh uh nasim talib who wrote the black swan a, a fair, i mean i own a lot of these books right and uh he posted something about like oh the crazy vax conspiracies and so i said you know what do you i genuine questions i'm just asking questions i was like what do you regard as vaccine conspiracy right. what does that mean do you do you know like let's talk about okay why why can't people talk about the fear and cleavage site right which mm -hmm. is the debate where, where what the origins of the virus were uh so that's an intellectually open question i said um I mean, it was an experimental treatment that was only given emergency mm -hmm, authorization mm -hmm. and um, it, uh, uh, you know, that the companies that are pushing it have paid the largest criminal file uh, fines in the history of the world for lying about how safe and effective their products are. And uh, instead of addressing the questions, he decided to block me. Hmm. I then followed up, actually I followed up with this right before he blocked me and I said, hey, do you know that attorneys and lawyers like me who write a lot about ethics, which is one of the things I do, um, actually got suspended or censored off social media for talking about the Nuremberg Code mm -hmm. and what constitutes informed consent. Mm -hmm. And so the intellectuals mm -hmm. on the left uh, seem entirely unwilling to actually grapple with true questions right. of what happened. Um, and, so, and, and it's all legitimate discussion. Like, what? you know, like, I know what I believe, right? I know what I think based on the information and knowledge that I have. And I am kind of intrigued how somebody else can have a completely different point of perspective. Well, well, and I would like to actually, I'm okay with having a dialogue with people but that's who I don't all, agree with. Right. It's, Cause so, it's okay. I mean, I know it's sort of the Socratic method and that's probably part of my training, but that is how you teach people to think is ask questions yeah. so by way of example this morning on facebook i was in a, a in a fight with uh <laughs> with uh, uh i forget the lady's something name madison madison Ma yeah something. or um madden i think is the last name anyway um it's it's all, in one of the manchester groups mm. right and so there are these declarative statements that kind of just get thrown one's mm -hmm. way where i'm like well let's unpack that right so by way of example there's the community garden on the west side yep. uh, in Ward 11, right behind my property, which, you know, everyone has been following the show. Yep. The uh, mayor and her friends uh, declared to be surplus and said it is not in use. Which, you, it's which is untrue. On, and so. so, you know, I've been doing the 91A request, which, of course, for people who don't know, is New Hampshire's. FOIA, so the Freedom of Information Act. So we have this tool as citizens in New Hampshire where we can ask for the documents on things that they're just basing their claims on. So I've been filing those with regard to this. Yes. And uh, the Parks and Rec guy got back to me yesterday with his part of the package. And so I've been reading through the letters. Most of these letters only say, uh, only declare that it's surplus. They don't give a There's reason, no, right. they There's don't say, you know, so they're pretty boilerplate. But this one actually just said uh, that this land's not being used for anything. So when I got that yesterday, I wrote back and I said, are you willing to concede that the land is currently being used <laughs> for a park and a community garden, Manchester Groves? And his response was sort of like, look, I, you know. I'm not going to uh, argue with you. I, uh, I, 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 I just said in the letter what I was told to say in the letter kind right. of thing, right? right? Which I do think is what happens. Sure. But so this lady today was, was like, well, it's in the best interests of everyone. And I'm like, let's unpack that. Right. Can if we you want that? to make the claim that it's in the best interests of everyone, I'm like, 
let's analyze that. I know it's in the best interest of uh, Group A, which is, uh, I would say, the city and the nonprofits that are benefiting from this, mm -hmm. right? Because they get paid. So we have to look at that yep. incentive structure. Yep. It is probably in the best interest or marginally in the interest of Group B, who are the people who are going to benefit from the largest. So based on the facts that the city has provided to me, that's about 100 kids who currently go to the Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. from the west side to the east side. Now, in one of the letters, they uh, a school teacher was like, yeah, you know, there's a bus driver shortage. So that's really the problem. So we're going to sell land because this Under year there's value, a bus driver to destroy a park where people are actually growing food yeah. um, in order to, because there's a bus driver shortage, right? So, um, so that's group A, let's say the elites over here, there's group B, that's the uh, people getting these services. Yep. And then in our scenario here, there's group C, which is the neighborhood where you're choosing to do this. So my gripe, is twofold. One is y'all should have told mm. the people who live there because I can prove that my property, it, it, my taxes are gonna go up and my property value is gonna go down. That doesn't seem like it's in my best interest mm -hmm. or in the 115, I believe, a butter neighbors, people who live right there's interests. Yeah. Uh, so more people being harmed than the 100, the 100 kids, kids that, that have are... to be bused seven minutes across the river. We don't live in Dallas. We don't live in New York City. We don't live in any of these big cities. Let's not pretend like, oh, it's a hardship to go from the west side to the east side. Tammy and I manage to do it every Tuesday. It takes five minutes. It's not so hard. So. I wrote an op-ed yesterday, uh, which I would recommend that everyone go read. Uh, it's up on my page, it's up on my website, carlagarrick.com, but where I basically explain this, where my question to everyone is, is this how we want government to function? Group A helping Group B without considering the people who they are asking the sacrifice from, because that is what's going on. And ironically, I will get the clip maybe and do it on my show tomorrow. Um, I was watching a documentary over the weekend while I was cleaning the kitchen, and it was a throwaway sentence, but the guy said, you know what socialism is? It's when group A helps group B at the expense of group C. And I was like, ta-da! So, yes, <laughs> it, only, it always transitions into something in my head. So I wanted to, tell, I don't even know if I, Dan may have mentioned this to you guys when he was um, there with Jenny the other day. But anyways, so anybody who's, who's ever heard me say it over the years, um, we have public swimming facilities in the city of Manchester. I have always thought it was unusually bizarre that we don't charge anything for people to use them. I grew up in a small town in upstate New York and you know, at seven years old, I walked, I did Google it to see, cause I was curious. I walked well over a mile by myself at seven and I realized times have changed and I paid 35 cents a day to go to the swimming pool. That was, right? And there was another year when I was in, I think, Gosh, I lived outside the city. We lived five miles outside of the city and my best friend Darlene and I and her brother would ride our bicycles the five miles from our house to the city line and then probably another t mile or two to the pool every single day that wasn't raining. And we had a season pass that I think we paid 10 bucks or 15 bucks at the parks department for. We did this every single day. So I don't have a problem with public pools. I just always thought it was bizarre that we don't charge people for it considering there are tons of taxpayers who don't use them. So anyways, I live on Varney Street and there is one of the pools, Theodore Rakel Pool, literally almost within sight of my house. Yep, right? I drove by there yesterday. I drove Does by. it only open at wait, noon? Wait, wait, There's, this, oh, is, okay. this is my story. <laughs> so last week, um, I think it was a week ago Sunday, Dan and I, I think it was, it was a weekend day, maybe it was Saturday. Um, Dan and I decided we were going to walk over to the pool and check out this pool that I pay for. I, I actually drove by there and I was right. like, oh, it's been so hot. Uh, Maybe right. I should start coming. And that's what we thought. <laughs> How crazy is it that there's a pool practically across the street and we're sweltering and right. why aren't we going swimming? Yep. So we walk over, do, 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 with our lemonade in my hand. 
And we get to, and it was so strange because all I kept thinking was, this is not, this is just weird. So there's these barn doors that need, are in desperate need of paint. And if the city can't afford a gallon of paint, I would gladly donate a gallon of paint to make these look a little less sketchy. But anyways, there's these barn doors that are cracked open maybe a foot at this point. Now, earlier that day, like two or three hours before, it, we had had a thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. It was humid and hot, but the skies were clear at this point. So we're like, what's the deal? Do we, is this where we go in? And so we peek in and there's this young girl. I mean, this kid's probably 14 years old. You know, like I'm not begrudging any of the kids that work at these places. And she says, oh no, we're not open. And I was like, okay, when will you open? And she goes, well, we normally break from whatever time to whatever time, but we're just not gonna open. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm confused. And now I remember seeing is a sign that says no outside food or beverage is allowed. And I thought, oh, well, I couldn't bring, okay. Okay, Dan, let, okay, when, when, when do you open? And she rambled off sometimes and I kind of glanced and off we went and I thought, okay, well, that's weird. The first time in, you know, my 30 years that I've lived in Manchester that I tried to use one of these pools on a hot, sunny afternoon, they weren't open. Even though there were people swimming in the pool, which I think were the lifeguards. So the lifeguard, it's not like the lifeguards had gone home. So that was my first experience. Then on, uh, let's see, today's Tuesday. So on Sunday, Dan and I, made our valiant effort to go back to the pool again, knowing that they open at one o'clock. Okay. We knew this from this previous experience. Um, so we drive, we drove, like I could walk. <laughs> but we were like, I don't know, I feel like we're going into something that we're gonna have to leave. So right. we drove and that way I didn't wanna drip all the way home. Probably. Right. We pull up, the sketchy doors aren't open, are kind of open. And I'm like, okay, it's not quite one. So finally at one o'clock and there's other cars, there's like two or three other cars with people waiting patiently for them to open at one o'clock in the afternoon, which I do think is strange that they don't open to one o'clock in the afternoon. And they open and we walk up and I've got my purse with me and Dan's got, because we're expecting to have to show an ID. And all they asked was, what zip code are you in? And I was like, oh, uh, that's weird. And okay. And you go through the shop, uh, okay. And now you're in this, absolutely pristine, gorgeous swimming pool area. Yep. And I thought to myself, okay, this is weird. This is just strange. There is this drop dead, gorgeous, clean, pristine pool and there's nobody here. There are very, very few people here. So we swam, it was wonderful. <laughs> well, let's keep it a secret. No, I never thought about that. I was like, I'm talking, this is a huge, it is a huge pool. pool. It's like an Olympic size pool. It is. Yeah. And I know that there was a man, I don't remember his name, and I apologize that I don't recall his name, who recent, in recent years spent his own money to extend the pool like a foot or two so that it would meet the requirements right. of the swim meets. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So we're chatting up with the lifeguards and everything, and one of them did tell me that, because I said, why don't they charge me a dollar to do this? A dollar. Like less than a hamburger at McDonald's. And she said, well, because it's a public pool. And I said, right, but somebody's paying for you to be here. It's not free. And she didn't disagree. And she said, well, I think it used to be Manchester residents, but now they take federal funds. So they have to allow anybody to swim, which I was like, mm, uh, then I shouldn't as a taxpayer have to subsidize people from Goffstown or Bedford or Massachusetts or whatever. So I was like, okay, whatever. And I'm, mm, uh. so then we swam and everything. There are literally, no benches yeah, it's in just this entire pool. thing. Yeah. There isn't a single bench in the entire park area except for one that's in the playground enclosed area outside. So we are having that discussion. As we left, there was a, a woman sitting under the tree outside on the ground because there are no benches or picnic tables to be found anywhere in this park who we have another conversation with and she's warm and she's going to go swimming eventually, but she's sitting under the tree because there's no place to sit. And she, we were talking about it and she said, I hope they never close the pool. And I said, well, I doubt they'll ever close this pool because this is where they have the swim meet. And there's a couple in the summer. So there's, it serves a different purpose. And we got talking and I said, shouldn't they be charging me a buck? And at first she was like, well, and I said, cause think about it. And she, I said, would you pay a dollar to go swimming? And she said, yeah. And then we got talking about the no outside food and beverages. And she was like, what? She goes, so I'm supposed to go to the pool in the hot sun without a bottle of water? And I said, well, my first thought was, well, there's probably vending machines and they don't want you bringing stuff in. So you go in and you buy it. Well, there is a vending machine, but it's not accessible to the public. It's inside where the employees are. So I'm like, I, I'm again, confused. 
So it seemed like there's very much this disconnect. You said government functioning. And I thought, uh, the whole time I kept thinking, but we could do this so much better. This is not... This is not a good use of all of this wonderful pool space and green space and everything. So then Dan and I have been talking about this and I'm like, but seriously, it's not, no business could ever function this way. So today, just to satisfy my curiosity that I did not recall incorrectly, at just before 10 this morning, I drove by the pool to see if even the hours that the pool is open are posted. are posted. Well, they are inside the building <laughs> that isn't open until, you know, when somebody's there. And I, Genius! So I was like, what? So then, and actually that woman and I that were talking about the, the lack of water, she said, I, I said, well, they could have a vending machine and generate some revenue to offset the cost, you know. And then she said something about, she goes, well, they could have a concession stand. And I said, well, now you're talking crazy land. But they could have. I mean, here's a wild they idea. They could actually just make it legal to have a food truck so well, that you could support your too. family. So a couple of food that trucks could awesome pull out too. there. So but the city of Manchester I, makes it almost impossible well, oh, to do that what? either. Like, could, the, could the kids working the counter, because there's like literally a handful of people. If there were 30 people there in the entire time that Dan and I were there, I'd be surprised. And I want to come back to that number. But I said they could sell potato chips for two bucks a bag and make a ton of money. So then I started thinking about the 30 people, right? And I'm like, okay, so 30 people, if they had each paid a dollar, which I realized in some cases it, we'd there would be free passes for the indigent and there would be season passes. So it might not be a dollar, but we're just going to use the dollar number because maybe they'll charge me $2. I don't know. $30 could have been generated in that small 20 minute window of time, half hour that Dan and I were there. 20 $30 would pay for a lifeguard for two hours. So like, even in this half hour test window, it would make total sense to be charging and offsetting the costs. So now, so I've gone back. Now I'm like, okay, so when the heck is this thing open? And Dan and I are arguing about it because I asked, so when are you open? And I believe that they told me one to four, and then six to eight because they close for I don't know something for, for the time that people actually would want. No, to I'm use just saying it, there's like one to four and then six to well they they tell you to seven forty five. Now if I go to the website because you know that's apparently the only place that we post these things you know where it's actually listed. It says um, oh and it's not going to find it. I want to say it says like one to six. And then family swim from X time to X time. There's like, but if you look at the sign that shows up on the. On so the, so can I just summarize all of this? Well, it's just, Basically, they're saying one thing here. They're saying another well, thing I mean, here. They're doing this. It's if idiotic. Want, if we just, I don't know, privatize you, the well, pool, if maybe. You want people, if this is a service that we're supposedly, t the taxpayers are subsidizing, right? Make it so that people can figure out how to even use it because this sign inside the doorway that you can't see says one to 445 and family swim from six to 745 proof of residency required between one and three and six to 645. None of that matches what is on the city website. And then I do have to laugh that also on the, the t parks website, it says there are these swim meets and the pool is closed during these weekends. And you can check out our other swimming facilities and they list the Hunt Pool, which hasn't been open for two summers. Why would you direct people to a pool that isn't open? Uh, you, you can't make this like bizarreness up but i looked at dan this morning and i said but the re i don't default i don't fault any of those kids that are working as lifeguards you know none of the people working at the pools are doing anything but their job that are they're probably making 13 14 bucks an hour for but how is it that the parks department isn't even thinking like how could we make this beautiful destination, something that the people Tammy, in the city you're talking about work. people who are literally ripping out a community right. garden. And, and, like, and, and there's no rhyme or reason. I thought, okay, so we're going to invest more money into Dairy Field Park, which, quite honestly, is nothing but a big giant lawn and some sports fields. If you're going to compare apples to apples, it's very similar to what is at Theodore Rako, 
There are sports fields right down the street. There is a big lawn. There is a small playground. But why is it that Theodore Rako on the west side doesn't have a single park bench or picnic table, but Dairyfield has a little pavilion with a couple picnic tables under it and park benches up and down Bridge Street? Yet we're going to put more money into Dairyfield than we are into I mean, any park on the west side here, of Manchester. Here, here's Something a question. Is woefully broken in government, it, just across the well, board. Well, answer, riddle me this. So I've been trying to figure out why. Uh, so on the on the west side, we did, uh, they, they just paved the west side arenas, so the ice, ice arenas parking lot. Um, and because that's a priority. Well, you know, I mean, not uh, like maybe was, the I mean, it was a little, it was a little potholey, but it wasn't the worst lot. of things. But you know, it was fine. But I was curious because there's also now, um, I think Bridge Street is about to be tarred yeah. and whatever, right? Yeah. So, my question is. We have these massive city budgets, right? Mm. So isn't the city budget of Manchester is about $300 million, yes. right? Um, yes. So like about $160 million goes to the schools yep. and the rest Something goes. Like okay, so $300 million worth of uh, services, right? So And we have about 130,000 residents. So someone at home do the math, but it doesn't seem... So I don't know, what's that? Like, You're going to keep talking. Keep okay, talking. so... Where is all that budget money going? Because why are all these projects suddenly being funded by ARP, by the American Rescue Plan funds? So suddenly everyone's going, we have this federal right. money, we have this federal money, we have to spend this federal money, which is also the subtext of what's going on with this community park. And I'm gonna get to the bottom of that for sure. But here's my question. What are they spending the actual budget on if these things aren't being done under the budget of the city? So somewhere, the money in, money out is not making Wouldn't sense. Wouldn't it be awesome? And Kathy Sullivan, if you're watching this show, the reason... I talk about corruption is because there's well, corruption. And wouldn't it be wonderful, as much as there is some transparency, and I don't know where that is, but I'm just going to say that I know that there was an effort to make it more transparent. Wouldn't it be wonderful to just be able to see point blank where all of our money goes? Like, literally, who are we paying, including city employees? Wouldn't it be nice to see? Of which not see? one was furloughed no, for two years I mean, if while you were declared non-essential. You know, if we're paying Joe Blow... You know, thirty-two thousand dollars a year to do job X. Why can't I just see that he's getting that money? And if we're paying, you know, Susie, because they don't want you to know, because and, you would be shocked and horrified. We're gonna I go like look to, what people are I making like who work see for all these nonprofits. Every line, every disbursement by the city, every single disbursement for every single thing could be listed on a website someplace so that we could look at the red ledger and say, look, this, you know, $8 million in ARPA funds came in. Oh, and here's where we spent the ARPA funds. Or maybe not. Or here's what the budget said we were going to spend and here's what we've currently spent. Not, not two years from now when we're talking about another budget. Can we see day in, day out where we are budget-wise? Of course we can't. Because they don't, they're, they're, there's no incentive for the government to make it so that you and I and every taxpayer in the city and every resident of the city can actually follow along and know what it is the government is and isn't doing. You know what the opposite of that is? Free markets. You know why free markets are awesome? Because you align as incentives in the right way. Because what is a free market? It is someone who has to provide you a service at a price you're willing to pay, willing, not forced, not told you have to, not coerced, not, oh, you need to sacrifice. Here's something you want to buy, you're willing to pay the price that they're willing to do, and you have a transaction. That is when incentives are aligned. Government is basically when you unalign all the incentives to the benefit, again, of the elites, the group A, the people over here getting the bennies, getting the bennies, and that needs to change. I agree. I was, you know... I'm not begrudging anybody who works in the park department. You know, like, okay, you do. But I am kind of intrigued what, if that's your job and you're making decent money doing it and you're getting a, a very nice incentive package and you'll have retirement and all that stuff. Do, is it, do, 
Do our city employees think outside the box? Do they think, how can we make this better? Or do they just go along with what is required of them? Because they are two distinctly different things. There's no incentive for government to be better, you know, and, and people generally to just bring it full circle to sort of the Socratic things and stuff. We need to start questioning everything, including question the question of whether you should question everything. <laughs> ha ha. It's uh, like, like we're, we're functioning under these assumptions, right? Here's a classic example. I saw a post yesterday that said it had, uh, I don't know if it was New Hampshire specific, but it was about school teacher salaries. Okay. And so it said the average, uh, uh, the average constituent, resident, whatever, uh, makes, I think it was $69,000 mm -hmm. in this area. And school, public school teachers only make $63,000, right? And so my comment was, don't school teachers only work nine months of right. the year? Well, I mean, the Delta why do you can hate, be Why explained. do you hate teachers? No. Why do you hate teachers, Carla? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's which of the way it comes is, back. You just hate teachers. So, so and it's like, no, actually, the technical thing is they only work two-thirds of a year. So, so part of what I hope to instill in people, and I think, like, why you should be able to at least trust what I have to say is if I don't know, I'm willing to ask the question, but then I want the answers because see, you can't operate under subterfuge and hiding things and all of that and then be like, oh, trust us. We're going to screw you, but trust us, um, because that's just not good enough. Before that's we, not how I want my government to work. Before we run out of time, I do want to mention a very good thing. Um, on September 3rd in Lafayette, Lafayette Park, which is the one behind St. Mary's Bank, right? Over on West Manchester is West Manchester Day. Um, oh, yeah. That'll be fun. It's and it says right there, so it must be true. Celebrating the community, so... You know, if you live on the west side of our wonderful city, um, why not come out on September 3rd and join other families and residents of West oh, Manchester? Oh, it was a blast last year. We had, uh, we had uh, rope pulling yep. and the yep. kids, there were little, like hundreds yep. of kids. So it was amazing. That is on, um, I believe that's a Saturday, don't quote me on that, September 3rd, West Manchester Day at Lafayette Park. That's all we have time for this week. If you have any questions, manchtalk at gmail.com. Check out Carla's book on Amazon and and someplace else at my website carlagarrick.com um, where you can learn everything you need to know about me there you go don't listen to um, the naysayers yeah and with that we'll be back next week enjoy um one more hot day and then a nice little respite and um make sure you get out there and enjoy some of the wonderful things we do have happening in the city and maybe go check out Rayco theater pool and get back to me and tell me what you think uh we'll see you next week bye. take care